Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English, and this is video number three of the three video series on preparing for your English literature exam. In video number one, I went over what is the mark scheme and what you have to know. In video number two, I went over the paragraph structure that you should be using. In video number three, guys, I'm going to go over how to plan an entire English literature essay. Now, you all should know, guys, that an English literature essay guide, they give you 50 minutes. Let's say you spend 50, sorry, they give you 50 minutes. Let's say you spend five minutes planning. That leaves you with 45 minutes. Out of those 45 minutes, you're aiming for four paragraphs. Anywhere between three and five is okay. Four is your sweet spot. And you're looking at about 11 and a bit minutes per paragraph. So essentially, guys, we're looking to do four paragraphs, guys. And we are looking at four pretzel paragraphs in our exam. So we got pretzel, P-R-T-E-Z-E -E and -E. In our exam, guys, we have to write out four pretzel paragraphs. Now, you should all know that in our paragraphs, guys, in our paragraphs, we have to address AO1, we have to address AO2, and we have to address AO3. Otherwise, our paragraphs are pointless. And we're basically going to walk away with a pretty rubbish essay if we don't tick off these three. Now, I've been over before, but let's quickly go over this, guys. AO1 looks at point and looks at reference. Is that in the shot? And AO2, guys, it looks at the following. It looks at the effect of lang, the effect of structure and the effect of form. And AO3 looks at your links to context. So that is what we have to do. And all of that has to be spread across this here. Now, this is how I advise you to do your plan. Paragraph one, you want to talk about the easiest stuff, the easy stuff. Talking about easy stuff doesn't mean you, you, you write about it in a rubbish way. The quality always remains high, but we're going to talk about the stuff that is easy so we get started. What I don't want is for you guys to be picking the hard stuff in paragraph one and you're sitting there not getting going. So in paragraph one, when it comes to our technique, guys, I would like us all to pick a language device. Guys, in paragraph one, I would like us all to pick a language device. And when we zoom in, I would like us to zoom in to either an adjective, verb, noun, or an adverb. So in your reference, look for a language device and explain the effect. And in your reference, zoom in to either adjective, verb, noun, or adverb. Don't do anything else. I don't want no context. I don't want no structure. I don't want no form. So in paragraph one, guys, we've ticked off this element of AO2. Then we're going to move on to paragraph number two. Guys, then we're going to move on to paragraph number two. And this is now when we're going to step up the exam slightly. In paragraph number two, guys, when it comes to your technique, I would like you to pick structure. And when it comes to, actually, no, let's not do structure yet. Um, I'll explain why in a second. Guys, in paragraph two, when it comes to your technique, I would like you to again pick a language device. And when you zoom in, guys, when you zoom in, I would like you to zoom in again to either an adjective or a verb or an adverb or a noun. This is the paragraph that in between our effect and our zooming in, this is the paragraph where we're going to add our context. That is why we want to keep everything else slightly easier because this is the paragraph that we're going to add context. Therefore, by the end of this paragraph, we have now spoken about context. In paragraph number three, we will be talking about a structural device and we will link this in our zooming in to the form. Remember, guys, if you've seen the first two videos, Form is what are you reading? So, for example, an inspector called is a play. Now, because an inspector called is a play, it affects the structure because it makes the pace really, really quick. So, in paragraph three, we're just going to talk about structure 
and form. Now, if you stick to paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, by the end of the third paragraph, you hit all three AOs. By the end of the third paragraph, guys, you hit all three AOs. Tick, tick, tick. 11, 11, 11. Beautiful. That is what I would like you to do on the day. We're going to address paragraph four in a second. Please follow this structure because I need you guys to make sure that we hit AO1, AO2, AO3 entirely in the exam on Wednesday. What I don't want is someone doing this because this is what 80% of students do. 80% of students just talk about language, 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 language. They don't talk about context. They don't talk about structure and form. Now, can you get a high mark? Sorry, can you get a decent mark by just talking about language? Yes, you can. Can you get a high mark without, sorry, just by talking about language? No, you can't. You have to talk about structure, form, and context. Now, we've done everything. Now, paragraph four is a free for all. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Now, if you want to speak about context twice, this is the paragraph that you do it in. So guys, if you want to speak about context twice, this is the paragraph that you do it in. But speak about a different piece of context. Guys, please make sure you speak about a different piece of context. If you've spoken about patriarchy over there, over here, maybe talk about religion, maybe talk about capitalism, but talk about a different context. Now, when I say free for all, I genuinely mean free for all. In this one, for your reference, you may pick a language device. And for your zooming in, you may pick a structural device. But this paragraph allows us the freedom if we've done these three. For this one, pick whatever you're comfortable with. And that's how you plan your essay. This is what we're going to be doing for Shakespeare. This is what we're going to be doing for our every question for English literature other than unseen poetry. Sorry, sorry. Other than poetry when we're comparing the poems. But for every other question other than the ones that we compare, this is the structure that you want to use. Four paragraphs. 11 minutes per paragraph. Each paragraph is pretzel, 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 pretzel. AO1, AO2, AO3 is our measuring stick. Every paragraph, every, sorry, every essay must have that in its entirety. Paragraph one, we pick out language and adjectives or verbs or nouns or adverbs. Why? Because we want to we wanna make it as easy as possible to get us started. Once we've started, paragraph two is the same thing, but we want to add context. And when I say add context, I don't mean just say, this shows patriarchy. Explain the context in detail. Then paragraph three, we go on and we address the last point of uh, AO2, the structure and form, and we do that here. And then paragraph four, you do whatever you want because by this point, you've addressed AO1, AO2, AO3. So you may pick out a language device, you may pick out a structural device, and you may bring context into it for a second time. You do that in your exam, guys. Your exam is beautiful because you've hit AO1, AO2, AO3. Now, do you need, before we finish, do you need an intro and do you need a conclusion? Do you need it? No. Should you do it? If you want. But you don't need it because it's not an integral, well, it's not a part of the mock scene at all. Um, but if you want to do it because maybe your teacher likes it or you've been taught that you should do it, guys, crack on. There's nothing wrong with doing it. But you will not lose zero marks for having an intro or a conclusion. In my opinion, all you're going to do, guys, is waste a bit of precious time. All right. Video one, we spoke about what the essays need. Video two, we spoke about how to structure a paragraph. And video number three, we looked at how to plan an entire essay. All you would do now, guys, is populate the rest of it. So for, for an inspector called, if the question was, how is Mr. Burling presented? You would jot down four ways that Mr. Burling is presented. And then four quotes. And in the quotes, you would pick your technique, then explain the effect and so on. Now guys, today is Sunday. Your exam is on Wednesday. I'm begging you guys, if you haven't learned 10 quotes per text, please learn your 10 quotes. Learn 10 good quotes that you can apply to a range of topics. All right, guys, it's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.